Okay, so let's talk about Maximus, which is a compressor. Expander. A limiter. And even a multiband saturation plugin. So Maximus doesn't work like a conventional compressor. It's got a slightly different layout and different way of working and thinking. Everything compressor and limiter and expander wise is all set up from the, what's effectively a grid system, a graph system over here on the left hand side. And what we've got running across the bottom is our input and what we've got running vertically is our output. So if we were to have a, a linear line go like this, it's exactly equal to input and output. So anything we play into it would actually remain unaffected when we haven't got things like saturation engaged. And it wouldn't even matter how much gain we add, no matter what we do. no effect will take place. However, by default, it is set to limiting here. And if you have a look right here on the right hand side, we've got a grid in dB and you'll notice that this is zero decibels. So now, no matter what we do, it will never pass zero dB, but the audio remains linear and unaffected until it reaches that zero decibel point. Not only does it do that on this one point here, as you can see here on the left hand side, we've got low, mid, high and master. So it does that across three frequency bands and a master processor, meaning you can have saturation, compression, expansion all happening separately on different bands and then perhaps limiting on the master, allowing for you to change what you're doing an incredible amount. So what I've done here is I've put this uh, instrumental into FL Studio and just running it into Maximus. It's the mix version, so there's lots of dynamics. It hasn't been limited at all. Um, if you do like the instrumental, it's available on the Warrior Sound Beat Tape Volume 2, which is on Spotify and Apple Music. You can check that whole thing out there. And uh, essentially, we can use it to reshape and add some tonality and different things to our track in a kind of unusual way. So it will work a lot like a traditional compressor if we want it to. So what we've got our input, we can use our point here and bring this down. And this is like bringing the threshold down on a compressor. So now our input's going to achieve uh, past this point and then compression will start engaging. And that compression will be based here. So this is like having our ratio. And we have a curve on here. So that's like introducing a hard or soft knee as well. That's how quickly that compression engages. We can then bring this down as well. And then it will also limit to that volume. So if we were to play that back now, you can see now it's capturing the most extreme parts. And as we can see here, compression is definitely occurring. We could soften it, make it more subtle. Allows us to dial it back quite a bit more. And because we can do that multiband, we can adjust the balance of the mix. So if we were to take low, for example, we could really compress that kick a bit more. And we are able to solo it just here. So we'll just hear the low end now. Perhaps if it hasn't got everything in it you need, over here we've got our band adjustment and we can view the bands just by clicking next to the monitor here. And we can see that it goes up to sort of 200 hertz. Let's just bring it to sort of 250 kind of area. Put a bit more of that kick in there. And what we could do, we could just increase the gain here, just using the pre-gain. We could just give it 
say 3 dB more and really increase the level changing that balance now when we unsolo it our low end is going to be far more pronounced that's perhaps a little bit much so maybe we would use some compression dial it back a bit really soft knee We've pushed it up 3 dB, so it's compressing a little bit earlier than it would have before. And it's still louder, it's being brought back a little bit. A sort of traditional compressor sense, we've got an attack and release as well, can make it attack far more quickly. It's really taking the punch away, so dial the attack upwards a bit more. Let those transients still snap through. Now we've got a release here as well. The release can go incredibly quick and we can actually have it occur so quickly that it starts to distort, which can give us quite a nice effect as well. So let's try that out, soloed. So it's saturating the low end a little bit here we can take that even further we could actually use either of the saturation algorithms here there's two depending on which way we turn the threshold we have two different versions um, if we push it to the right we see the saturation starts to creep in from the top this means when the audio reaches that particular level it will begin to saturate like soft clipping um, and we can change that ceiling level and where it starts to occur if we were to bring the threshold to the left, the whole channel's lit up and the soft clipping doesn't occur until the audio starts to exceed it and this can be far more extreme. Or just add a little bit of distortion and flair to the sound. So we'll unsolo it now. And what we do is we'll turn the compression off and uh, back on and just have a listen to what it's doing. Yes, yeah, so we've lifted up a lot of that low end. We've added some distortion, extra body in there. affecting the low end we can play around with this as much as we really like and let's take into account let's say in the mid-range for example we we want this snare to be a little bit faster and sharper this is where we could maybe use some expansion so let's solo this now this is covering a big area of sound we can use high here to dial it back and say we only want this to really happen at 2k we've got quite a, a narrowish band in the middle now Pulling this back here, we're actually going to be increasing in amplitude. But we're increasing in amplitude based on the compression settings. It can be really quite extreme with it. That's made a real change to the balance of our track. here as well. It's quite nice. You can see a nice representation occurring here where the peaks are being cut off with this soft clipping. It can be extreme with it and it's very very obvious we lose the transients. Taking this to the extremes, bear in mind we've added all this extra dynamic anyway, quite a nice effect. This is how it would sound without the master compression. This 
instead of compressing the master now, we could look at having a function that's just the limiter. And give ourselves some extra gain. That's a pretty big difference. Let's just A and B have in what we've done with Maximus on and off. So we're going to be off at first and then we'll re-enable it after a few bars. We've made some pretty drastic changes there by adding a little bit of expansion. We've compressed, limited, and saturated the low end, and then just overall gained up and limited the master track. Something really useful to note, these snap around on the grid here. Um, you might want to be far more subtle with it and go just below the zero dB. So we can just turn off the snap to grid here, and we can bring this down in very small increments now. And you can see just up at the top of FL Studio exactly what those read outs would be. So we're now set at 0.3 dB for our limiting. We'll push the low even more. Let's just try saturating the whole mix now. There we have it, a vastly louder and improved and tweaked instrumental in only a couple of minutes. I'm hoping that that was useful for you. Now I've got a bit more of an understanding of how Maximus functions and how that you can make use of it. And uh, if you need to see more videos on this, just let me know in the comments below and I will get them together for you. Thank you very much for watching.